the sky full of stars shining like jewels. But in fact, this is not the actual sky. It's a planetarium. Today, there are about 400 planetariums in Japan. That's the second largest number in the world after the US. The world's largest planetarium, with a dome 35 meters across, is in Nagoya. Japanese people have long enjoyed the starry skies, on occasions such as moon viewing parties and the annual star festival. Optical projectors made in Japan have captured over 70% of the global market, entrancing people the world over. These days you can enjoy the planetarium experience not only in special facilities, but also at cafes and even a Buddhist temple. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is planetariums. We'll bring you the latest on efforts in Japan to recreate the starry sky in ever greater detail. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Over here behind me, you'll see what's one of Tokyo's current hotspots, Tokyo Sky Tree, which just opened in May. And along with it, or I should say right next to it, is a planetarium right over here. I think I've been to a planetarium about twice in my life, once when I was in primary school in London, and that was way before Apollo had been to the moon, and just even a glimpse of space was a very exciting thing. I've also been to one in Japan once as well. That must be over 30 years ago now too, but it seemed a lot more technologically advanced than the one I saw when I was a kid, so we're probably in for a real treat now as we're 30 years into the future. Let's start off today with a look at what Japan's planetariums are like. Over the past two or three years, there has been a planetarium boom in Japan. Around 10 planetariums are being refurbished or newly built every year. And more and more women are becoming interested in gazing at the stars. They're called space girls, and they're creating demand for a variety of astronomy-related products. A recent assortment of astronomical phenomena viewable from Japan has helped to drive this boom. For example, in July 2009, a total solar eclipse was visible in Japan for the first time in 46 years. The following year, the Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa, sent into space to research asteroids, completed a seven-year, six billion kilometer voyage. Then this May, the moon eclipsed the sun once again, forming a ring-shaped solar eclipse visible in many parts of Japan. With this spate of space-related events, the number of people interested in the stars has grown, and planetariums have become ever more popular. Let's take a look at a few of Japan's many planetariums. First, a conventional one. This one is in the Shibuya district of Tokyo. The night sky is projected onto this dome-shaped screen 17 meters across. There are 120 seats. Let's look at the room's setup. The latest planetariums usually come equipped with three basic systems. First is the star projector which creates images by using lenses to regulate light traveling through small holes. It can display about 250,000 stars. Each of the lenses displays its own specific part of the night sky. The combined image is then displayed on the dome-shaped screen. The result is one sky full of stars. Next is this long, narrow device, which projects planets such as Venus and Jupiter. A separate machine is used for planets because they move differently from the stars. The third system is a projector that displays digital and computer-generated images. Actual light from optical projection is used alongside digital images. 
it almost feels like you are there in space. Next, let's look at a rather different planetarium. This is the international terminal of Tokyo's Haneda Airport. And in this cafe on level four, we find a planetarium. This projector is one of the latest models. It uses an LED light source and can project 40 million stars. Travelers can relax here, gazing at the night sky before their flights. And this is a Buddhist temple in Tokyo. There's a planetarium here too. It's a small facility with a dome eight meters across and 22 seats. Ryo Kasuga, the temple's chief priest, is an avid stargazer. He built the planetarium 16 years ago. The Earth is just a point in the vastness of space. Good things and bad things, major events are constantly taking place. All of the wonderful events and terrible events, happy things, sad things, difficult things. We should take everything in our stride. The planetarium opens twice a month. Kasuga himself explains the show mixing in Buddhist teachings. Our last stop is the Ikebukuro district of Tokyo. This is a planetarium that's popular with adults. One secret to its popularity is the design of its seats. The armrests can be raised, so couples can cuddle up and gaze at the stars. And then there's this, a machine that emits special fragrances. People here can view the starry sky with nice aromas wafting around them. The screen here projects a night sky with 400,000 stars. The fragrances match what's shown on the screen, encouraging relaxation of mind and body. It felt great. I feel restored. I stopped here after work. As you can see, Japan's planetariums have all sorts of uses, from educating children to giving adults a way to relax. And this is the inside of the planetarium. It's a bit like a movie theater with a big domed screen, which is essentially what it is, I suppose. You can see it's got stadium seating as well as you would have in a movie theater so that you can see from wherever you're sitting. And over here is the projector. You can see that these things have become a lot more compact than they used to be and a lot more high tech as well. And the seating, very modern. And of course, the seats recline too. Well, the show is about to start, so I'm gonna stay exactly where I am and enjoy it. While I'm doing that, you can take a look at the history of planetariums in Japan. From ancient times, the Japanese used information gleaned from the stars in their daily lives. Based on the movement of the stars, they would judge when to fish, when to sow crops, and when to harvest them. Around a thousand years ago, the nobility had moon-viewing feasts where they would compose and recite poems. Even now, there is still a mid-autumn custom that involves offering dumplings and viewing the harvest moon. In the 17th century, the Japanese began observing the stars more and more scientifically. The government of the time established a special office in charge of doing just that. The office used an instrument called an armillary sphere to track the movements of the heavens. It produced a highly accurate calendar that successfully predicted solar and lunar eclipses. The planetarium was invented in Germany in 1923. And the first one in Japan was set up 14 years later in 1937. The projector was imported from Germany. It was the first planetarium in Asia and it drew crowds day after day.
20 years later, in 1957, the first Japanese-made planetarium was completed. The next year, this planetarium's projector was shown off at a science expo. The 20-metre-wide night sky drew an incredible response. 230,000 people visited it during its three-month exhibition period. Soon, planetariums were built in major cities throughout Japan. They were mainly used for educating children. At that time, Japan was in the midst of an economic boom. New buildings were shooting up in the cities, their lights blotting out the stars. Planetariums delighted children, for many of whom the starry sky was a special sight. By 1990, 5.8 million people were going to planetariums every year. Planetariums had established themselves as places for educating children, but they soon began to lose visitors. Many new forms of entertainment were competing for attention. However, this was also a time when astronomical technology was advancing rapidly. The Hubble Space Telescope being just one example. Based on the latest information, new projectors were created that could display more stars than ever before in an attempt to recapture the popularity of planetariums. Optical planetariums work by shining light on a disk called a star plate and then projecting the resulting image on a dome-shaped screen. The star plate is covered with tiny holes. The number of stars that can be displayed depends on the number of these holes. Highly accurate laser technology proved to be the key. By adding holes to the star plate with a level of precision that was previously impossible, the number of stars that could be displayed rose dramatically. Better projectors represented only one improvement though. Planetarium shows were also overhauled. Just learning about the stars wouldn't hold everyone's interest forever. A number of new shows combining instruction with entertainment were developed. There were shows that took audiences on journeys through space. Shows that were more like illustrated stories of what the night sky and its constellations looked like in different parts of the world. And shows that used computer graphics to increase their impact. Thanks to the efforts of engineers and technicians, the annual number of visitors to Japanese planetariums has seen a steady increase since 2002. Currently it stands at 7 million. The Japanese have loved the night sky from time immemorial. And that love has driven the development and success of planetariums in Japan. Well, that was kind of like seeing the Edo period recreated with computer graphics in the night sky in front of your eyes. I kind of envy the people of Edo though, because they could actually see the stars up in the sky, which these days in Tokyo, very rarely can you see anything at all. It's a bit of a shame, I must say. To create an optical planetarium like this actually requires some really high level engineering. And that's why there are very few companies that do it. In fact, there are only four in the world and three of them are Japanese. A state of the art planetarium like this is the result of really large companies applying all of their engineering capabilities. Next though, we're going to meet an individual who single-handedly changed this industry. This is Takayuki Ohira, a planetarium creator. 14 years ago, he developed a projector capable of displaying over 100 times more stars than any projector that had existed up to that point. And he did it alone. He went on to set many planetarium world records. His machines can even display celestial bodies darker than sixth magnitude. In layman's terms, stars you can't see with the naked eye. 
This is a recreation of the most beautiful night sky that can be seen from Earth. It's a sky full of stars. Ohira was born in Kawasaki in Kanagawa. He first became interested in planetariums when he was at primary school. He loved making things, and one day he came upon some glow-in-the-dark paint in a stationery shop. It would be fun to make stars with this, Ohira thought. He cut stars out of paper covered in the glow-in-the-dark paint and stuck them around his room. When he turned off the lights, they glowed like real stars. Inspired by this experience, Ohira decided he wanted to make a planetarium like the ones you would find in towns and cities with his own hands. This is a sketch of a planetarium that he drew in the sixth grade at primary school. Technical terms that he learned from astronomy magazines filled the page. When he was in his second year of high school, Ohira had an experience that would confirm his destiny as a planetarium creator. He went to Australia to view Halley's Comet. The vast starry sky unfolding above him left a huge impression. Right above my head stretched the Milky Way. It really looked three-dimensional. It was then that I thought that even the planetariums created by professionals had not reached this level. I felt that the real goal was to reach a different and a more advanced place. Ohira resolved to recreate that beautiful starry sky, which even the best planetariums of the time could not do. He went to university and studied mechanical engineering. And in a small room at home, he began creating a planetarium all by himself. After working on it for four years, he finally succeeded in creating an optical planetarium using lenses to project images. At that time, typical planetariums displayed 10,000 stars at best. Or he did far better. His projector could display 45,000 stars. Another seven years passed, and Ohira then had a planetarium that would turn the industry upside down. It could show 1.7 million stars, almost 40 times more stars than his previous one. The smallest stars shown by the new system could not even be seen by the naked eye. After this achievement, he went on to break many world records. In 2008, he finished a planetarium that displayed 22 million stars, attracting worldwide attention. This is the heart of Ohira's planetariums, the star plate. I think you can see that there are many holes in this sheet, and the area with an especially large amount of light is the Milky Way. In this single plate, there are about one million holes. The smallest of the holes have a diameter of less than a thousandth of a millimetre, and the light that is projected through them is so slight that it can't even be seen by the naked eye. But these invisible stars do help to recreate the depth of outer space. Despite it all, Ohira is still not satisfied. In pursuit of an even more realistic night sky, he went last year to the Atacama Plateau in South America. The Atacama Plateau is 5,000 meters above sea level and receives only 10 millimeters of rainfall a year. The exceptionally dry, thin air allows people on the ground to see the world's most beautiful night sky. The original is outer space itself. There's only one sky. A planetarium is a place where you can see that sky with your own eyes, in ideal conditions. To create an artificial sky, it's vital to see the real thing for yourself. Using a special camera setup, 
Or hear a photograph every corner of the sky. At 5.50 p.m., the sun set and darkness came quickly. Behind the Southern Cross floated the Milky Way. Wow, this is really something. I can see the real Milky Way. I can really see it. Phew. Astounding. Gazing at the world's finest night sky, Ohira was once again struck by the beauty of space. After returning to Japan, he threw himself into the creation of a new planetarium. This is the beautiful night sky that Ohira photographed. 15th and 16th magnitude stars, that is very dim ones, are crisply displayed. Well, as you can see, it's a fantastic image. He is going to recreate this image in his newest planetarium. It will take at least a year to complete. It's like a musical instrument that I've made myself. I create it, I play it, and I put on a show. That's why it's so much fun. Or Hero will continue to push forward and find new frontiers. This is the International Tokyo Toy Show, a trade show that takes place once a year. And we're here to see another planetarium, but with a bit of a difference. Ohira-san doesn't just make planetariums for large facilities. He also does a whole line that can be enjoyed in the home as well. For example, these here are made to be used in the bath. You have your projector here in the lid, just switch it on and go six different colors, plus there's a new line of these ones which have an aroma function as well. And then next to that you've got the Aurora model. Um, this one takes you to the sky over Helsinki on Christmas night. You get the night sky plus the Aurora as well. And this one and these two both g give you a view of about 10,000 stars. And at the very top of the line is this model here. You set it up in your living room and off you go with a display of a whopping 120,000 stars. Okay, we'll move on now and meet a group of children who brought back to life a planetarium that had been once completely closed down. Toyoake, a city in Aichi. On the roof of Toyoake Junior High School once sat a planetarium that was a popular local landmark. The projector was built in 1964 and showed beautiful night skies to children for many years. However, in 2004, work was done to strengthen the school against earthquakes and the dome was taken away. The projector was still there, but there was no place for it to display images. Where would the people of Toyoake find another eight meter dome? It was then that the members of the Toyoake Junior Astronomy Club boys and girls from all over town decided to take a stand and create their own dome by hand. They set out to make an air dome using tent fabric, which could be inflated and deflated at will, so shows could be held in places like the school gymnasium. With help from science teachers, they created a blueprint and began constructing the dome. They had to be very careful in the construction to ensure that no light would enter the dome. <laughs> it's one year since they began. At last, all the tent fabric is connected. They waste no time inflating it using a fan. But will it work? Yes, here it is, a completed dome eight meters across. If we were even a single millimeter off, the dome would collapse. 
Getting the cutting right was really difficult. Having heard that a new planetarium has been successfully created, people from all over the city come to see it. At long last, the projection begins. The children of the astronomy club do the explaining. It's great that children and adults have cooperated to do something so wonderful. I really hope they keep it up. A planetarium is back in Toyoake Junior High School after eight years. The starry sky built by children will continue to shine as a place that the city can take pride in. The planetarium you've just seen has been used for a variety of different local events to teach children about the stars. And because it's portable, of course, it can go anywhere. Now, what you see behind me here is also a planetarium. And the company that built this one actually has a delivery service. They'll bring it to your very door. And it's another inflatable tent. The only trouble with this is that you have to have a pretty high ceiling, about 4.2 meters in the case of this tent. We're in a kindergarten right now, which does have a fairly nice big room to do this, so their children are going to be lucky enough to get their own planetarium show here. I know that one, Saturn. Oh, the great bear. Let's ask them what they thought. It was fun. Well, to be quite honest, I had every bit as much fun as they did. And when I asked them who wants to go to space, everybody said yes, of course. Who knows, 30 odd years from now, we may see a whole new generation of astronauts emerging from their ranks. I'll see you again next time. In Japan, a festival of regional fast food is a special occasion and a huge event. We see how Japan's unique nature and culture have nurtured an amazing range of food experiences. <laughs>